Today, we're going to have Mama G speak to you, and I'm so excited about that. Are you ready? So, uh, I get the privilege to introduce you to them. This is the first lady of the house. She's called. She's anointed. She's full of God's grace and mercy. She is a lover of people, and she has such a connection to God. She walks in the Spirit. And her gifts, honestly, as big as you've seen them, there's way more capacity, just like there's way more capacity in you. And at G5, we're committed, aren't we, Mama? We're committed to bringing those gifts out in you and watching God just bless you and increase you and build you. So I'm going to pray for her, and I'm going to ask you to join me as I pray for her. Uh, I do a men's call once a month. And uh, I challenged every man to pray for their wife every day. And I was talking to a man the other day, and he said, Tim, why is it so uncomfortable to pray in front of your wife? I go, I know it feels weird, don't it? Part of it is his vulnerability. Part of it is, is, okay, I'm going to let her see my heart. I'm going I'm to let her know my fears. I'm going to let her know my concerns. I'm going to let her know that I don't have it all together. But, man, when we call their name in prayer, it changes everything. Next month, the men don't know it, but I'm actually going to send a video every day of saying, let's go another 30 days, and today we're going to pray for this. So uh, if your mama's single right now, I just want the sons to step in there and pray for their mamas, okay? Can we do that? And we'll watch God. Daughters, you can join in too. It's fine, man. You can sneak and watch the video. It'll be fine. I'm going to pray for her. Father, I thank you for this beautiful lady. I thank you that Gay Goad made it to this planet. I thank you that Sylvia Answers and Ray Anderson, you anointed them with this gift to the earth. I thank you for her calling and her anointing. And Lord, I'm praying today that your anointing will increase in her life. I'm thanking you today, Lord, that revelation is going to be revealed in her soul and fresh wisdom and fresh passion and fresh fire is going to be delivered in her soul. Thank you, God, that you do it in us before you do it around us. So, Lord, we make room for you. So I just pray for Gay, Mama G. I thank you, Lord, for her gifts, for her obedience to you. Bless her today as she blesses us. In Jesus' precious name, and everybody said, amen, amen. Let's do it. <clears throat> wow. You guys can have a seat. I was going to say, I'm not quite that short. Oh, my word. Okay, that's hard. Now, I think we can all just go home now. My goodness. Wow. Oh, they're bringing up my incredible PT husband. Brought these gorgeous, right? I want them right by me. These gorgeous flowers. Oh, they're not amazing. And I'm like, I need to. Now, I'm a, I'm a walker, so we pray to God those flowers stay where they are. So, how many of you know it's like watching a tennis match? If you've ever watched, heard Mama G preach, it's kind of like that or ping pong, one of the two. But anyway, I'm just so excited. Happy Mother's Day. How incredible that. And you know what? Can I say this? Thank you. Can I say this? That It doesn't matter if you have not actually given birth to a child and you're still a mom because someone's watching and you're still mothering and there are young girls and young men that are watching you. Even if you have not given birth, you are still, I consider you a mama and then you're going to be a mama one day. And so I just want to say happy Mother's Day to everyone. And um, I just want to talk today. God Just lay this on my heart. The title of what I want to talk about is called There is Power. There is Power. And I just believe there's so much power in a mom. But I love this. I wanted to read this. This is um, some questions that kids were asked about their mamas. Uh, Number one, it said, why did God make mothers? The first answer was mainly to clean house. (laughs) The next one was she's the only one that can find the scotch tape. That's why God made mothers. Number next question was why what kid of a little what kid of a little girl was your what kind of a little girl was your mother? I don't know, I wasn't there, but I'm guessing she was pretty bossy. <laughs> 
Number three question, what ingredients does God use to make mothers? Answer, God makes mothers out of angel hair and clouds and everything nice in the world and one little dab of mean. (laughs) We got that dab, right? The next question, why did your mom marry your dad? First answer, my grandmama said she was not in her right mind. (laughs) Next one said, my dad makes the best spaghetti in the world, and my mom likes to eat a lot. (laughs) Like, oh my gosh. The fifth question, what does your mom do in her spare time? First answer, mother don't do spare time. (laughs) I'm amen to that one. The next one was, to hear her say it, she pays bills all day long. The next one said, if you could change anything about your mom, what would it be? I'd make my mom smarter so she would know it was my sister who did it and not me. (laughs) I love it, right? I love it. And it's so true. I love my mamas. You're my heroes. You're rock stars. I mean, I, I think about this. We're tenacious, resilient, strong, courageous, understanding, forgiving, multitaskers, jugglers. We're the bomb. You're the bomb. This is another one. They are Uber drivers. They are nutritionalists. They are psychiatrists. They are housekeepers. They're a nurse. They're mind readers, because we, you know, we know where everything is and we know what they're thinking. They're teachers. They're trainers. They're cooks. They're potty trainers. They're bookkeepers. They're personal shoppers. They're grocery deliverers. And they're peacemakers, right? And I think one of the greatest things is that moms are teachers. And I love, this is an anonymous, something from an anonymous son that wrote the following observations of his mother. He said that his mother taught him logic. She once asked, if everyone else jumped off a cliff, would you do it too? His mother taught him medicine. If you don't stop crossing your eyes, they're going to freeze that way. His mother taught him how to become an adult. If you don't eat your vegetables, you'll never grow up. His mother taught him about genetics. You are just like your father. His mother taught him about his roots. Do you think you were born in a barn? His mother taught him about the wisdom of age. When you get to my age, you will understand. And I'll explain it all when you get older. His mother taught him about anticipation. Just wait until your father gets home. And the time, my favorite thing that my mom taught me is justice. One day you will have kids and I hope they turn out just like you. Then you'll see what it's like, right? It's so funny when you look at this. But you know, when I really think about moms, there's one thing we all have in common. First of all, none of us would be here without a mom. Let's just talk about that. That's pretty cool. I don't care who you are. There was a mom involved somewhere. And that's pretty cool. I mean, that in itself, I could close the book, drop the mic and say, there you go. God knew, but it's important. But this is something that we all have in common as moms. We have this list, this list that we can never get done. And guess what? We live in defeat of this list every day of our lives. This list starts to clarify who we are. This list starts to define who we are. And we have this list that we think we have got to get done. This list has nothing to do with who you are. I can guarantee you, mom, when you and I get to heaven, there is no way that God's going to look at us and he's going to say, I need your list, please. (laughs) And I want to know how you did on that list. Nothing at all is going to be said about your list. But we have this list that has to get done. I'm the mom. It's going to make me the greatest mom ever if I can just get this list done. He's not going to worry if the laundry was folded perfect, Joe. He's not going to worry. (laughs) This man, let me tell you something. I will never let him come over when I'm folding laundry. I have never, he has it. The towels go, and and he's not a mom, but the towels go a certain I was like, explain this to me one more time, Joe. He goes, yeah, you, you fold it. I can't even explain it. And I'm like, every time I fold a towel, I go, Joe would be mortified. If he's, I'm like, you're just going to pick it up and dry with it for God's sake. Right? But we think it's got to be perfect. And we think that everything we do has got to be just what we got to be the best carpool driver there is. We've got everything has got to be perfect. And God's going, that's not 
what I'm saying. Now, now, before all you run home and say, Mama G said, I don't have to clean house anymore. That is not what I said. It is important that you keep your house in order. Please hear me. It is important that you do these things. But if you constantly live out of your list, you will never live in his grace. I'm going to say it again. If you and I constantly live out of our list, we will never live in his grace. We've got to accept his grace and give ourselves grace. I mean, oh my word, I can just, there's so many times in my life that I miss the list. And not even one thing got checked off the whole daggone day. And I get up and I'm feeling like this horrible mom. And God's saying, there's so much more that I want for you. I'm telling you, ladies, you don't understand what he created you and I for. And so many times we just get so caught up. See, I believe God gave a mama a GPS. You know what it stands for? God's positioning system. God's positioning system. That system is going to put you in the position where you can raise your children and raise those people around you the way God wanted you to. But if we're in our list and we're not using God's GPS and having him positioned where he wants us, we're going to miss it. I've missed it so many times. I believe that there's power in a mom. That's why the title is called There is Power. There, everybody say power. power. Okay, now, now this is going to rock you. It rocked me. Are you ready for the definition of power? Whew. It means authority and influence. Authority and influence. I don't know about you, that's kind of scary and cool at the same time. Because God's given us a power of authority and influence, but then you and I get to decide how we're going to use it. And, 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 and ugh, have you always done it right? If you're in here, you may leave. No, right? Never. Never done it all right. I haven't done it all right. There's so many. We'll talk about my mistakes here. It's all throughout my talk. That's what you get to hear. I lay out my dirty laundry because it dries faster. It always dries quicker. In fact, I grew up where you hung the laundry out on the, the little line. Oh, gosh. You go out there and your shirt was so stiff you could barely even put it on. And supposedly the fresh air smelled good. No, it stunk. There was no fresh downy in that out there in the dry. Anyway, you'd hang out your, dry, your uh, dirty laundry. So number one, number one thing that mama has is the power of prayer. Power of prayer. Now, don't tune me out right now because you've heard sermon after sermon, talk after talk. Everybody talk about prayer. I'm so tired of hearing about prayer. You'll never, ever, ever hear me stop talking about prayer because you and I will never be the mama we were called to be if we don't pray. It's all about prayer. I love this. First Chronicles 16, 11. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Everybody say always. 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 is so much different than sometimes. Say sometimes. sometimes. Always. always. Big difference. But I mean, do we really do it? Listen to this. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Oh, this one's, hmm. Do not be anxious about anything. Oh, Okay. If you saw my list for Elevate on my phone, and I read this and went, okay, God, that's, a, that's funny. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. That is the most powerful packed thing, but the number one line, do not be anxious about anything. How many anxious moms do I have? Every day we get up and it's, oh God, oh Lord, did I do it? Did I do it right? Am I doing it right? Could I do it right? It's on, and we're constant, instead of praying. First Thessalonians 5.17, so simple. <laughs> Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. I had a lady say to me one day, well, I don't know what your life is like, but I ain't got time to pray. That's my, ain't, sorry, my Southern ain't got time to pray. You don't have time to pray? I said, did you do laundry today? I said, yeah, well, yes, of course I did. You can pray while you do laundry. It's an amazing thing. You can pray, you could fold it like Job at the end of it. Say, yes. You can pray while you walk. You can pray while you drive. You can pray while you put on your makeup. Most of us probably should pray while we put on our makeup. Lord, help this look better. There's, you can't tell me there's no time to pray. There's always time to pray. Can I tell you, when Tim just talked about this, he remembered hearing his mom in prayer when he would come home from school. Moms, 
What would happen if our kids heard us praying, heard us calling their name out, speaking names, speaking life, speaking healing over them? I really challenge you to do something, and we've done this. Go in and anoint their pillow with oil and pray over their pillow before they go to bed at night. Pray for your children. Pray for wisdom. Tim talked about this. PT, I'm sorry. Pray for wisdom. I don't know about you. I don't know what I'm doing. I get up every day and say, God, I pray for wisdom. I need wisdom every day, every morning, not only as a mom, but as a wife. God, help me. Give me wisdom. Help me understand what you would have me to do. I love this quote. It says, have you prayed about it as much as you've talked about it? And women, we're talkers. We can talk about anything. We are the best advertisements for anything. You find something you like and the whole world knows about it within a day. We tell everybody, now you got Facebook, Lord help us all, and Instagram. But we talk about it, but have we prayed about it as much as we've talked about it? This is for men too. Have you prayed about it as much as you've talked about it? Pray, pray. That's the one thing I will tell you. My mom sometimes drove me crazy because I promise you she prayed about everything. Like we couldn't go to the store, any kind of store, anything without her. Okay, let's just pray. Father, we just thank you for giving us favor at the grocery store. And I'd be like, Mom, we're going to the grocery store. But you know what? It's powerful to pray for favor. My kids, guess what they heard me do? They would, <laughs> to this day, I can pray for a parking place now. I'm telling you something right now. And then when I pull up, I don't go, ooh, look at me. I go, God, thank you for your favor. And when we, we are on a road, uh, Tim and I were just in Burlington. It's okay to say Tim. I'm, saying, I'm so used to saying Tim and not PT. But we're in Burlington, and, and they had the road blocked off. And there were two cars that must have been in a speed thing. I don't know what happened, but I'm talking, they were mutilated. There's no way I can imagine anyone survived it. But the first thing that Tim and I got in, immediately started praying. Father, I just thank you. Whoever was in that accident, we pray that wherever they are, Father, we ask that you be with them, that you would bring him. And we start praying. Moms, you teach your children how to pray. They don't have to just be on their knees in a closet. I, <laughs> I set up a prayer closet. Around my shoes, it still got the pictures up. And I did really good for two weeks. And then it was like, and some of you were good at it. I'm just going to tell you, I'm not. But I can pray on the run. And I can continue to pray. I can continue to lift up my kids. The second thing is there's power in example. Power in example. Beside the word example, if you're writing and taking notes, I want you to write the word transfer. Example and transfer, huge. Because whatever you do will be transferred. What is your example? Example transferred. I love the scripture. Do, this is in 2 Timothy 2.15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who do, does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Listen to this one. 1 Timothy 4.12. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, and in purity. And then there's this one. Titus 2, 7. In everything, set them an example by doing what is good. In your teaching, show integrity and seriousness. Your example will be transferred. Moms, I, I got to remind you of something every day, even if your kids are out of your home now, even if they've, they've left and you're an empty nester or you're whatever you want to call that nester, if whatever that is and they're gone, they're still walking around with a notepad watching you and they're taking notes. They're taking notes of you and I and how we handle things and how we see things. And it's incredibly important that we understand how powerful God uses a mom. Your example, your example of, of just like, and I had a lady come to me and she said, I just want to tell you something. I had a horrible mom, horrible mom, terrible example. And I'm just, I can't do it. I never had the example. I don't know what I'm doing. I said, well, let me first tell you, I'm so incredibly sorry. I'm so incredibly sorry. But I want to tell you, I got good news. You get to break the curse. You get to break the chains. And from now on, your kids, you're going to give them generational grace. And you're going to help them understand what you can be to be a mom. Okay, you had a terrible mom. Who's going to stop the curse? You. 
Stop it. And I'm telling you, I guarantee you, things were passed down to you. I was raised in an incredible home, but I was raised in a sarcastic home. And most people think sarcasm is okay. No, it's not at all. And my dad, who didn't know, who was raised by a dad who was sarcastic, was sarcastic. Guess who became sarcastic? Mama G. And you could hear me. And you know what's crazy? I never even knew it. Heidi, I didn't even know that example had been in front of me. Guess who pointed it out? PT. I will never forget the day. I'm down in the hallway wrestling with break. Now, some of you guys are going to think this is crazy. You're going to think, that's so petty. It's not. And I'm wrestling with Blake, and we're down there, and all of a sudden, all I say is, oh, my word, your breath is horrible. What did you do? Oh, my, what, do you not, are you not old enough to know how to brush your teeth? Did I not teach you how to brush your teeth? Go brush your teeth. And Tim is in, he goes, gang, listen to yourself. And I was just like, wow. I had no idea. What if I had just said, hey, babe, you probably forgot to brush your teeth. Let's wrestle again, but why don't you go brush your teeth and come back? You're such a leader. There's a difference. I had a lady say to me, she said, I'm sorry, I was talking at a women's conference. She came to me and she goes, I loved your talk, but the whole sarcasm thing, I'm sorry. We were raised in that and we thought it was funny as kids and that's just how we are. I'm sarcastic with everybody. I think it's funny. I said, oh, okay. I said, let me ask you a question. If you had walked in and sat down right before I spoke and you sat down the front row and I looked at your hair and, you know, ladies, when sometimes when we sleep hard and we get that thing, you know, that you're kind, everybody, oh, I love watch women. They're always doing this, that one area you're trying to cover. And it's like walk up like that. And, and I looked over and go, oh, excuse me. I think you stuck your finger in a socket or I'm not sure what you did, but there's this wonker thing up on top of your head and I think you need to fix it. And she's laughing. And I said, or I could look at you and say, hey, ma'am, I want to help you out. This happens to me all the time. And go over and just fix her hair. And she got tears in her eyes. And she goes, wow, that's a big difference. She said, oh, my word, what do I do? My kids are teenagers, and I've raised them to be sarcastic. I said, stop it now. Stop it now. Go to them and ask forgiveness and say, I'm so sorry. I went to our kids and said, I'm so sorry for being sarcastic. We were doing school one day, and they didn't have their books out. And I said, excuse me, did I stutter? Where are your books? Oh my word, you ladies, I'm telling you, I'm confessing it. And that was the example that was in front of me and now I'm duplicating it, but guess what? I stopped it and you get to stop it. So it's not a good thing. Your example is everything, yes. Your example is everything. Everything, everything, everything. Example, And you know what? You get to be an example of how to treat their dad and how to treat your husband. Talk about transfer. I knew that I wanted to make sure I always honored PT at home, especially in front of our children, and honored him anywhere. Our kids never heard me cutting down their dad, slamming their dad. Oh, my gosh, your dad. I remember when Tim was always on the road or he was traveling and in meetings, and and I remember when he called one day and he said, hey, babe, I'm going to be late again. And we were already sitting at the kitchen table, and we already had the food. And I was just like, oh, and the kids would go, what did he say? What did he say? And I had a decision, right? Right here with that phone, I had a decision, ladies. What kind of example was I going to be? And there's times when I'm not a good example. And I hung up the phone and I said, guess what? Dad wants to be here so bad, but he can't right now. He's out working for us. Let's eat. Let's keep his food warm and let's make him a note so when he gets home, he has something that says we love you. Honor your husband and their father. Honor. Honor. Show them what it is to serve. I always made sure that I served Tim and I showed the children. Our kids would fight over who was going to take him his food for. It's my turn to take that his food. Because we always served Tim first. Always. To this day, our kids immediately, Dad, I'm getting your plate for you. But they saw it, not because I'm perfect, but they saw it because I wanted to give the example of what it was to serve, what it was to give that. And I just hope you believe and hope you understand that it can be transferred. Number three. The power of patience. Moms get the power of patience. Do me a favor, mom. Don't pray for it. As soon as you pray for patience, bring it on. The flood, you're going to need Noah and an ark because it's flying. Proverbs 15, 18. Hot tempers cause arguments, but patience brings peace. Wow. Hot tempers cause arguments, but patience brings peace. 
How many know it's important to have peace in your home? One of the greatest tones that mom gets to set in your home is peace. The next one, Ecclesiastes 7, 8. The end of something is better than its beginning. Patience is better than pride. Oh, the joy of patience. We had just moved to Florida. Thank God he delivered us from Ohio. It was such a blessing. You have no idea. I prayed ourselves out of Ohio. Before we did, I did pray for a Cracker Barrel because there was nothing in Piqua, and I got a Cracker Barrel, thank you very much. The prayer of a fervent wife and mother. But then I prayed to get out of Ohio. Hallelujah, we came to Florida. And so we're in Florida, and we had an empty house for I don't know how many years. The kids loved it. They can run all over the place, and there was no furniture. But I remember when we finally got some furniture, and we got this butternut yellow leather couch. Oh, yeah, it's upstairs. It's going to come down someday. It was gorgeous. Back then, that was like, you know, this was, we've been here 21 years. And I was like, oh, this couch. It was like my couch. I never sat on it <laughs> because I was always running around, but it was a pretty couch. Tim was gone one day, and he was, I can't remember where he was, probably at the office one day. And, and my precious princess, little Bree that you see up here, little Bree with the mic in her hand. Yeah. She found a Sharpie. Yes. And she found the butternut yellow couch. Brand new. I never sat on it. And I come walking in. I'm a happy little mother. Oh, ho, ho. you know, I'm in my beautiful, I'm all dressed up. No, I'm kidding. And I come walking out, and to my horror, all the cushions have been sharpied. Sharpie. Couldn't be dry erase. It's sharpie. And I am like, <laughs> and I'm like, <gasps> and I go, <laughs> Tim goes, <"What's> <laughs> he's thinking, you know, oh my Lord, I got to go to the hospital. Who's dying? Whatever. I'm like, no. Oh, it's the yellow couch. He's like, what am I? Oh my gosh. I'm just freaking out. And he goes, okay, look, what do we do? What do we do? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We got to find something. We got to, we got to go to Google. We got to, I got to find somebody. I got to find somebody. And so he goes, he gets on and we start calling around and we find this man up in Bapopka. He's got to come out. And I'm like, sir, drive fast. Please <laughs> get here fast. He goes, sir, we got to get that out today. It's got to come out today. I'm like, oh, you're not kidding. It's got to come out today. And I'm like, okay, okay. Woo, woo. And he comes in and he works on it. And praise God, you cannot see see any of the Sharpie on the couch. <laughs> but what's my point? I chose a butternut couch over my daughter. Because I didn't have the patience to deal with what she had done. And I put all this on the couch, this beautiful couch that could be replaced but not her. We do it every day, moms. And I'm sorry, I, this is, first of all, I, please hear me. This is not a beat up session. Again, I'm talking my stuff. What I'm telling you is the importance of us understanding that patience with our children and understanding is huge because guess who's patient with us? And who doesn't say, look what you did. He doesn't hold the couch in front of our face. He's patient with us. And so I had to learn, you know, I, our son, Blake, oh my word, growing up and still to this day, the man can ask some questions. A lot of them. Let me say it one more time. A lot of them. And my patience was there. You know what I'm saying? But mom, why? But mom, what are you doing? Mom, where are we going? First thing you get up in the morning, mom, what are we having for breakfast? I don't know. I don't eat breakfast. And I'm like, I don't know. And then I go, oh, God, I got to think about breakfast. And mom, what are we going? Mom, where are we going after we eat? Mom, where are we going? Mom, I'm like, oh, oh, my word. I don't know what to do. And Tim looked at me one day and he said, Gabe, do me a favor. Have patience with him. Something you're forgetting is that leaders ask questions. He's just leading. He just wants to know. And I'm going, okay, okay, God, thanks for my leader. <laughs> Could you, could something else to find a leader? No. To this day, he does. He called me yesterday. Hey, mom, when this is all done, what are we doing? I don't know, but I'm glad you asked. <laughs> and I smile and kiss him on the cheek. No, I don't because he won't let me kiss him. But <laughs> patience with understanding of your children, whatever that is. Every, every child's different. But giving them the understanding and the patience and the love patience. We lived on the road, lived on the road. And our children were always in our uh, room. Okay. So you've got a TV on when you're in a hotel and you're all trying to go to sleep. So guess what? Our kids were used to a TV on to go to sleep. So guess what? 
we were only home three days a week. So for me to train them not to go to sleep with the TV and then in three days we're back in a hotel room and there's a TV, it was kind of crazy. So our kids fell asleep, yes, terrible mom, kids fell asleep in our bed with us. Now, this is the deal. A lot of times Tim was on the road. So it was me and the two kids. Now, I'm not exactly the tallest thing in the world and our kids started growing. And I'm supposed to carry them to bed. And at the time, Blake, because he's my wild sleeper, was in a, um, but what's that bed? A big log bed, massive log bed. That there's stairs that I actually had to use to get up on it. And it had rails. And I'm carrying this child who's asleep. I mean, I've bammed his head and his feet. And I'm like this, carrying this kid. And then I get to the bed and there's a railing. And I got to get him up over it. I'm, I swear we should have video. And I'm like, throwing this kid up over the thing and just like, oh my word. And then Bree, have you seen her height? And then I'm like, Tim, there's, I can't do this anymore. And he goes, well, try to walk them. I tried it when that didn't work. They're not going to walk. They're dead sleep out of it. I'm still trying to carry him. And I'm like, something's got to happen. And so we had to start teaching them how to not fall asleep with the TV. You talk about patience. It was like, oh my word, I can do this. I can do this. What am I saying again? It's incredible. Listen to Romans 8, 25. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. I was waiting for the day when our kids could go to sleep without a TV in front. Now they can't stand, turn the TV off. I can't go to sleep. Like, oh my word, how opposite is that? Right? Have patience. The third one is power of love. The power of love. In 1 Peter 4, 8, above all, Keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins. Colossians 3.14, and above all, put, above all, all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. I believe, mamas, that it's the love we show our kids is going to heal that broken heart. How many of you have ever had a little kid come to you with a scrape on their knee, whatever they've had, and it's the love in your heart. It's the love that you show them. It's the love of understanding. It's the unfailing love. It's the unconditional love. They all learn differently. They all act differently. But you need to love them where they are. Our children are completely two opposites, but we love them where they are. Love conquers all. I love it. It says love never fails. Love never fails. Love never fails. When you want to go yell, love. Love. When you want to judge, love. When you want to quit, love. Love never fails. Love never fails. Love never fails. Don't keep, treat your kids like they're a nuisance. Understand how important they are and love. Love never fails. I got to keep going. Number four, power of intention. Power of intention. Listen to this. This is so powerful. Intentional living is the art of making choices before others choose it for you. Intentional living is the art of making choices before others choose it for you. Don't overfill your life so that intention has no space. If you overfill your life, intentional will never have a space. I had a pair of readers before I even needed them. It's so cool, now I need them, but I didn't need them back then. And on my island in my kitchen was the reader and it had a little quote and it said, remember seeing them do good. Why is that? Because as moms, what do we do? We find everything they've done wrong. Your bed's not made, the kitchen's a mess, you didn't put the dishes up. And I found myself barking out everything that was wrong. And I would see the reader sitting on my island and go, remember seeing them do good. Catch them doing good. Be intentional with what you do. Live intentional. Be intentional. Guess what? It takes extra. It takes extra to be intentional. Listen to this scripture. This is powerful. Ephesians 5, 15 through 17 in the message. Don't waste your time on useless work. Mere busy work, the barren pursuits of darkness expose these things for the sham that they are. It's a scandal when people waste their lives on things they must do in the darkness where no one else sees. Rip the cover off those frauds and see how attractive they look in the light of Christ. Wake up from your sleep. Climb out of your coffin. Christ will show you the light. So watch your step. Use your head. Make the most of every chance you get. Think about it. These are desperate times. Don't live cariously, unthinkingly. Make sure you understand what the master wants for you. 
Intentional. Moms, be intentional with your words. Do you understand how much life we have in our words to our kids? We, we have always affirmed our kids. We have always made sure they knew who they were. We call every morning, good morning, princess, good morning, warrior. Always spoke to them, always spoke up to them. And a lady said to me one day, you know, you guys really need to be careful because you affirm your kids so much that they're not going to be able to handle the real world at all. I'm like, oh, no, total opposite. They will be able to handle it because they know who they are and whose they are. And the world will not tell them any different. But that didn't just happen. Everybody used to say all the time, oh, you guys have such good kids. Yeah, they just popped out good. No, it takes work. And it wasn't always done perfectly because we're two imperfect people. But it's affirming. You get to speak to your, be intentional with your words. Be intentional with what you say. We were at the airport yesterday and a mom is standing by the bathroom in the airport in front of everybody. Tim had walked away and she goes, oh my word, you make everything about you, everything about you and I'm over here, you're such a pain. She's screaming it and the six-year-old kid and then he starts yelling, you're a liar. She goes, no, you're a liar. And he goes, no, you're a liar. And I sat there and Tim walked out and I go, I'm sorry. I'm sitting here watching this and it breaks my heart that the moment of intention this lady had and what she just poured into her son, she'll never get that back. What we say with our words is so powerful and we get to speak life and moms, you're so good at it because you're loving and you're nurturing and mom, dad, dad, God made you, daddy, God made you that way. The last one is power of moments, power of moments. Listen to this, moments don't have to cost but moments missed will cost. Moments don't have to cost but moments missed will cost. Truthfully, moms, my heart breaks if I think of all the moments that I missed as a mom. I remember the day Bree was standing in the bathroom and I had my list. I had my list. I hadn't even checked off one thing yet, so I was stressed. And she's like, Mom, could you come do my hair? I'm thinking, really? You know what my first thought was, Mom? You're eight now. You can do your hair. Am I ever been there? So I went into the laundry room because that was on my list. And I heard this incredible voice called the Holy Spirit say to me, really? Laundry? Over a mommy moment with your daughter? Do you know the day when she's not gonna ask for you to do her hair? And you just missed it. I remember moms putting down the laundry and just walking in and I couldn't even hardly do her hair because of the tears because it started reminding me of the moments that I had missed. But this was the thing that was so exciting because God woke me up. I tried to never miss a moment again. And mommy moments aren't convenient most of the time. It's when you're in the middle of your list and we don't wanna stop. In my, black, I have a black bag, we're still trying to find it. It's got me all stressed out because it was my lipstick bag, not because the lipstick was in it, because something else was special in it. And I carry something in that bag because I was at Cracker Barrel one day and I was going to pay the bill and I'm like digging and digging through my bag and there's Hot Wheels and there's army men and stuff flying everywhere and the lady by the name, she goes, does that not drive you crazy? Your kids expect you to carry everything in your bag. I mean, she just went off. And I literally had tears in my eyes. I said, no, ma'am. I said, see, there'll be a day when Blake doesn't ask me to carry the Hot Wheel anymore. There'll be a day when he doesn't want me to carry the army men. I don't want to miss this moment because this moment matters. So in my little bag, and Bree used to get and sit in my, I've got pictures of me and her at the hotel room because that's where we live. And I'm squat down on the floor on that beautiful carpet. Yes, I did it. And I'm in the mirror and she's sitting in my lap and she'd always go whips, whips. And she'd want me to get her lipstick on. And I'm like trying to hurry because we're going out and going on stage. I'm trying to get her ready. But I would take the time with the lips. And so in my black bag is an army man and a little thing of chocolate chip, which is her favorite cookie dough, lips. Because I don't want to forget the moments. They're 24 and 21. I don't want to forget the moments. I want to remember the moments. But what happens is a mom, we get called in a rut. And a rut stands for repeating until trapped. And we get trapped. 
And we stay in this rut and these moments are passing by us and we don't see them. So I'm just going to really beg you to make sure you see them. See them now. I don't care how old they are. Make sure you see them. Make sure you acknowledge them. Your little girls are twirling around and going, mommy, look. And they're wanting to know if they're pretty and they want to know. And you get to tell them. And your son is saying, am I a warrior, mommy? Do you see me? Do you see my muscles? And they want to know, and we're like, oh, yeah, 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 so whatever. No, it's like your son asking questions. Okay, Blake, that's enough questions. No, don't miss the mommy moment. Don't miss the moments. There's so many moments that we miss. I love this. Give your kids mommy memories because you took the mommy moment. You get to give your kids memories. Listen to this. This is about a man who took a moment. A man stopped at a flower shop to order some flowers to be wired to his mother who lived 200 miles away. As he got out of his car, he noticed a young girl sitting on the curb sobbing. He asked her what was wrong and she replied, I wanted to buy a red rose for my mother, but I only have 75 cents and a rose costs $2. The man smiled and said, come on in with me. I'll buy you a rose. He bought the little girl her rose and ordered his own mother's flowers. As they were leaving, he he offered the girl a ride home. She said, oh, yes, please. You can take me to my mother. She directed him to a cemetery where she placed the rose on a freshly dug grave. The man returned back to the flower shop. He canceled his wire order. He picked a bouquet and he drove 200 miles to his mother's house. Moment. Make The moment, I love my moms. You guys are amazing, you humble me. You're incredible, you're so gifted. But I just want you to remember where your strength and power comes from, him. We'll never make it without him, ever. But we are his hands and feet. And that's the greatest thing that we wanted and I wanted to show our children, was how to pray, how to hear the voice of God. I don't want them to hear any other voice. And there's many of them. I want them to hear the voice of God. But how are they going to hear it if I'm not calling out to that God? If I'm not leaning on that God? If I'm not saying, Lord, direct me, Lord, forgive me. I spent most of my mommy years, and I'm still a mama, asking for forgiveness for all the things that I didn't do correctly. But oh my word, I'm so grateful for the moments with Jesus on my face, on my knee, saying, God, I'm not enough, but please give me the wisdom. You're gonna be a grandmama one day too, and you get to continue this. But it's important that you understand the moments. I wanna end in this. And one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna have mamas come up and PT's gonna come up because I want us to pray for moms. Moms are so doggone important. I can't even tell you. And I know some of you are so tired. You got up today and you I'm tired of being a mom. Or maybe I don't feel appreciated as a mom. And I'm so sorry. But I'm telling you, God wants to renew you. He wants to refresh you. And I'm believing too, if some of these mamas in here got kids that have walked away, let me tell you in the name of Jesus, those kids are coming back. And don't you stand and feel like a mom that's defeated and you've done something wrong, God is gonna honor you as a mom and he's gonna honor your prayer, but it takes prayer. It takes God, it takes Jesus by your side. I wanna read this. I'm gonna try to read this. This is by a lady named Devada Dalton and she wrote this in Chicken Soup. She remembered one particular hectic day in her life. She had 10 children and had one on the way. But this particular morning was more trying than others because her son, Lynn, who was three at the time, was on her heels no matter where she went. Whenever she stopped to do something and he turned back around, she would trip over him. Several times she patiently suggested fun activities to keep him occupied. Wouldn't you like to play on the swing set? She asked again. But he simply smiled and said, oh, that's all right, mommy. I'd rather be here with you. Then, she, then he bounced happily back along beside her. After stepping on his toes for the fifth time, she began to lose her patience. 
and insisted that he go outside and play with other children. When she asked him why he was acting this way, he simply looked up at her with his sweet green eyes and said, well, mommy, in Sunday school, my teacher told me to walk in Jesus's footsteps, but I can't see him, so I'm walking in yours. We are his footsteps, and we get to guide our children and our grandchildren and other people's children and G5 children. We got G5 kids and littles here that still need us to be a mommy, even though they have a mommy. We get to be the example. We get to show what Jesus does. We get to understand what he means by a mom. And I think it's so incredibly important that we understand the power, not our power, the power that he's given us to be a mom. I'm going to ask PT if you'll come up, please. Yes. Uh, would you stand to your feet? What a word. Moms, I know uh, that Mama G's prayer and heart today is that you be encouraged, that you be strengthened, that you can sense your value, you can sense in your soul that you really matter. We're not going to be long, but I want to take a moment to just minister to moms. And maybe you're in the room and maybe you've never had a, you've never had a child, but you're still a mom. Maybe you're in the room today and you're a woman and you so desperately want and have wanted children. And that dream has never become a reality yet. I want you to know this morning that God wants you to have the desire of your heart. Some of you have a memory of a mom that maybe wasn't as kind as she could have been, as patient as she should have been, as an example of who Jesus really is. Maybe she was still trying to figure out who she was, but she was doing all she could. Maybe you're here and you've lost a child. You've lost a baby. I can only imagine the grief and the pain. I just want you to know this morning, if you will make room, he will pour himself in you and be everything you need. Some of you right now, you're in battles for children. And some of you feel like you're losing and they're giving you all kinds of facts but I want you to know this morning God wants to give you the truth God's got good things in store for you I'm not trying to be a positive preacher oh even though I am positive but I, I want you to know I know that we are people of faith and so I just want to say if if you're here today and inside of you you're exhausted or or even if you're elated right now Maybe you're a grandmother and you're trying to figure out what is my role now? I just want to say your children still need you. Your daughter-in-laws need you. They need you to love them. Maybe, maybe we need to start deparenting a little bit and start saying, you know what? You're the leader. I'm just going to be here to serve you. Letting go of control my way, the way I'd like to do it. Being a mom's tough, especially if you're being judged every day of your life. I just want you to know God is not judging you. He loves you. So I just want to make it available today. If you're a mom, or you want to be a mom, or you feel like you're being a mom, you're an aunt, and you've never had children, but if you would like for us to pray for you this morning, we're going to get radical. Is that all right? If you'd like to step out of your seat and come forward, we're going to pray for you this morning. Every mom in this place, you don't have to feel pressured, but if you want God's strength to just fill your heart, come on down here, get close. Mama G and I are gonna pray for you right now. Come on, make room, we're not gonna be very long. And while they're coming, I wanna admonish those of us 
Whose are the children of these mothers coming up? Can we do it? Come on in, ladies. Please listen to me right now. I beg you, if you, you, every one of us have a mom. And this morning on my way to church, when my mother was tragically killed in an accident when I was 18 years old, on my way, the Holy Spirit said, I want you to call the lady that took care of you. And I just called her and said, I want to say thank you. You're an incredible mom, and I'm so grateful for you. I want you to do three things for your mothers today, okay? All of us right here. If your mom's still alive or somebody that's had that influence in your life, can we do this? I want you today to hug them. If you can. If you can't hug them, if you're not physically close, call them and give them a hug over the phone. Say, I'm just wrapping my arms around you right now, and I hope you can feel it. Maybe you can FaceTime them, okay? The second thing I want you to do is love them unconditionally. Hug your mama. Love her unconditionally. Some of you, you're going, well, you don't know what my mama did to you. Forgive her. Forgive her. Make a decision today that you are not going to allow the poison of the past to stay in your life today. Can you do that? And the third thing I want you to do is I want you to serve them. I want every teenager, I want every child to hear me right now. Love her. Hug her. And serve her. There may even be somebody that needs to apologize. Mom, I'm so sorry for my disrespect. I'm sorry that I've dishonored you. I forgive you. Some of you have been hurt. Some of you even abused. Will you just forgive? Well, we're going to pray for you right now. Can we do that? I just ask that you'll reach your hands this way, just this way. And if you're out there, will you point your hands towards these beautiful ladies that have come forward this morning. Father, I come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. I come humbly, but I also become boldly. I thank you, Lord, that you right now are going to minister to every heart and every life. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to heal these mama's hearts. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to hold them in your arms. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to restore them. I pray, Lord, that you're going to give them energy. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to give them hope. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to give them fresh dreams. I pray for that mama right now that feels like she has an empty nest and that she's all alone. You are not alone. You're just about to be released in a, in a work that's going to blow your mind. Let go of yesterday right now in the name of Jesus and step into your destiny. Lord, I pray for that mom right now who is broken because of a loss of a child. Maybe they're still alive and they feel like they've lost them. Lord, I pray that your anointing would just heal that brokenness. For that mom that lost a baby. Lord, right now, I pray for mamas that in a decision, they gave up their child. They aborted their child. In the name of Jesus, bring healing. Bring peace. I speak to the shame. You have got to leave. I thank you, Lord, for healing. And I thank you right now that this mama's going to know she's going to meet this baby in heaven one day. And this little child is dancing before the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And Lord, I thank you that no weapon formed against them will ever prosper. I break in the name of Jesus. I break that spirit of guilt of yesterday, Lord. Lord, right now I pray that you'll give wisdom and hunger for you like never before in every life. God, I'm praying right now that we will love our mothers unconditionally, that we will hug them today, and that we will serve them today, Lord, that we will honor them with our words, that we will honor them with our actions, Lord, that we will honor them. And I pray for every mother right now, Lord, I pray that your grace and your power would fill their lives and meet every need, Lord. We thank you for your love. 
you like to pray to Gay real quick and then we'll close? Lord, I just thank you for all these precious women. I thank you for their hearts. And God, I do know that some of their hearts are breaking right now for so many different reasons. When you carry as a mom, your kids will always be your kids and we carry so much. And God, I pray that as we raise our hands, we're lifting, we're letting go of whatever it is we're holding. It's not ours, Father. We've got to give it to you. I thank you, God, for your grace. I can guarantee you we all have probably already messed up today. And your grace says that's okay. I have my anointing on you. I've called you to be a mom. And God, I thank you that you're restoring us right now. And that you're saying for us to be whole. I know there's so many needs represented right here. There's so many things on your heart. Maybe your children are not following the Lord, or maybe there's so many different things you've got. And I pray that as women and as moms, we will give it to God and let Him have it. It's His, don't carry it. Live in His peace, know who you are. Make room for Him. Become available for Him to do what He wants to do in your life. And we thank you, God, in your name. So Lord, we seal this by the power of the Spirit of God. Lord, I also speak to that spirit of discouragement, of despondency. I speak right now to the spirit of suicide and I command you in the name of Jesus to be released over every life. Lord, today let us know there's great hope and that you're about to rewrite everything in our lives, Lord. And as a mom and as a woman and as a leader, Lord Jesus, I can step into the destiny and the legacy of a mom who made a difference, who showed the generations that are following how to love God, how to honor, how to pivot, how to reset. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to wrap your arms around them and love them today. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Could we just worship now? Would you just raise your hands and let's worship here together?
is where we lay it down You are all This is my surrender This is my surrender Come on, can you give it up for Jesus this morning? Hey! Amen, amen, amen Well, mamas, we love you so much you mean so much to us, especially at G5. We love you so incredibly much. And um, can we just give it up for that word this morning? Thank Mama G for that. So good. So, so good. We have um, a special little thing for you guys, surprise. And um, it's actually really cool for our servant leaders. But today in the food line, actually, our incredible servant leaders, men, they're going to actually be serving the moms and the women today. And so can we just thank them for that? We just want to serve the guts out um, for you guys this morning. We want you to know how special and how much you are loved. But um, when you leave, we're also, there's going to be a little gift bag for you guys um, out in the breezeway we're going to have out there for you guys as well. So we just want you guys to be so loved and cared for um, today. But um, I'm going to bless the food and then we're going to be released. Just real quick too, if there is like a mom in here that just really has a special need and a special prayer and you just, if you will find me, we will make sure that um, that I pray for you and you and I pray together as, as two incredible believers and we'll pray for whatever that is, just so you know. Amen. So beautiful, yeah. Catch her. She runs fast a lot, so you got to catch her and stop her. <laughs> um, but um, I'm going to bless the food, and then we're going to be released to go enjoy just this beautiful Mother's Day God has given us. Just so grateful for this place, um, just that so we can come and have community. So let's pray, and then we're going to head out. So Jesus, we just thank you for who you are. God, I thank you just for this time of community. God, I thank you for giving us this opportunity to honor moms and to honor their sacrifice and to honor that the love, the endless love that they give. God, I thank you for just empowering and strengthening and refreshing the hearts of every mom in the room this morning. God, I thank you for this time together. I just pray that it would be just honoring of you and honoring of one another. Thank you for this food. I ask that you'd bless it and nourish it to our bodies, God. God, we love you so much. Give us wisdom. Give us so much wisdom, Jesus, as we walk this out. We give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Church, I love you. Go have a beautiful rest of your Mother's Day. Enjoy it. We love you, mamas. Happy Mother's Day.